Good afternoon, everyone, and greetings from the Great Smoky Mountains in the town of Pigeon Forge here in Tennessee, where today we're at Dollywood, the wonderful theme park. In this video, we're gonna show you everything Dollywood has to offer, from the rides and the roller coasters to the food and the shows. I go by the legend, joined by my wonderful, wonderful girlfriend, Molly. You forgot the merchandise. And we're gonna show some merchandise, too, of course, <laughs> here at Dollywood. And what better place to start the tour of Dollywood than with the roller coasters and the newest roller coaster at Dollywood. This is Big Bear Mountain. It's the most expensive coaster Dollywood's ever built. And it's also the longest roller coaster Dollywood has ever built. And it's a very, very family friendly roller coaster. It there's, doesn't go upside down at all. It does launch three different times. And it's pretty cool. It's got onboard audio with some music that plays. That's my favorite part. And they have puns with the audio. Yeah, because the storyline is like they're searching for the big bear. And it plays like these silly puns along the way. It's a it's a it's a fun ride. Nothing nothing amazing, nothing incredible. Probably a great ride if you are seven or sixty-seven. Yes. And uh, we're lucky enough we get to ride a lot of roller coasters. And this was a milestone for Molly. Number six hundred point five. Point five. <laughs> this green roller coaster is Dragonfire. A, a family friendly roller coaster here at Dollywood, but one that does have some thrilling elements as you're going to watch it drop down here in the first drop, which takes you into this tunnel and then you come flying out over by that lake. It's definitely more intense than the one that Absolutely, and it's pretty fun. Although, one thing about this fun, it is a very low capacity ride, it only has one train, so uh, it's one you want to hit very early in your Dollywood day. This big, wild-looking building that is home to the Mystery Mine roller coaster, one of the better themed roller coasters here at Dollywood. But unfortunately, it's also one of the roughest roller coasters here at Dollywood. It's been a few years since I've ridden it because I got a giant bruise on my arm the last time I did it. Yeah, it's one I do like for the theming level. There's really cool, some cool tricks in there and some really great theming elements. So I am okay with a bit of the pain for that that kind of experience. But a lot of people are not. Located in the back right corner of Dollywood, you'll get the Tennessee Tornado, which is a super fun roller coaster. It's got a big first drop down a tunnel. As soon as you get out of the first drop, you go in this giant loop. It's a ride that looks really, really uh, rough, but it's really not. No, it's really pleasant. Um, not the easiest thing to see because it's all the way in the corner of the park. Uh, this is another one of the roller coasters here that tends to have a little bit better capacity and it's off on the corner, so if you're at Dollywood on a busy day, this might be a ride you want to come and ride. I like it a lot too, thumbs up for me. Uh, this was built by an old company called Aerodynamics. It's one of the few coasters built by that company I actually enjoy. There's probably just five or six of them, maybe four. We're currently at the park's wooden roller coaster, and that is Thunderhead. And this is a ride I've been on in the past. Some years it runs really well. Some years it is not good at all. Happy to say, They've done a lot of work on it this past off season, and it is running really, really good. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good ride. Yeah, it's a, a long wooden roller coaster. It's got a really cool station flyby element where it comes right in where the train is loading. There's not too many of those, right? No, there's only, only a handful. And yeah, if you're on the fence about riding Thunderhead or not this year, definitely do it. Um, the ride is running just absolutely fantastic. Up on the hill in the middle of Dollywood, it's the big blue roller coaster. That's called Wild Eagle. And it is a wing coaster, so you kind of ride outside the train. And it's a big ride, but it looks more intense than it is. It's actually a rather gentle roller coaster. It's also one of the, the favorites of the guests of Dollywood, probably for how gentle it is. And I like it. I, I, I don't love this ride. I think the best parts are the visuals of being on top of a, a roller coaster on top of a mountain. I also really, really like the train. It's got these great eagle-themed wing coaster trains that are just fantastic. Right by the entrance to Wild Eagle, you do have this awesome sculpture. It's really nice. The green roller coaster here, that is Fire Chaser Express, and it is an awesome family roller coaster. Uh, forwards launch, lift hill, backwards launch, it is really, really fun. I love how it has a pretty good amount of theming to it as well. See the waterfalls, the little fire engine themed roller coaster vehicles. Molly, this is one of your favorite rides in the park. It is. It might actually be my favorite. Wow. Yeah, I know. The big 
Thursday. Yep, it's got a really cool show scene in the middle. So one of the more thematic rides mm -hmm. at Dollywood. Without a doubt, my favorite ride in all of Dollywood is Lightning Rod. Also easily the most intense ride in the park. Absolutely. This is an out of control, wild uh, roller coaster built by the guys over at Rocky Mountain Construction. A and lot like, of airtime. Lots of airtime. It's got the quad down element, which is one of my favorite elements on any roller coaster ever. Um, it's kind of built in the mountains, in the woods. It is awesome. But this ride does break all the time. It's not uncommon for this ride to be down for weeks at a time or on any day at Dollywood, it could be down for half your day. So if you see it open and the weight isn't too bad, come over here. Also, one of the rides you consider going to right as the park opens. We're currently out, for me, the most classic ride in all of Dollywood, and that is Blazing Fury. It's definitely a unique one. Yes, it is uh, mostly a dark ride, and you're going through a town that is on fire, so the, the police, uh, not the police officers, the firemen, they have to come and save the day, and it's, it's wonderful. You know, very cheesy, very old timing. Mm -hmm. But to make it different, there are some roller coaster segments to it where you will drop down and uh, some pretty cool scenes as well. I, I haven't been on this in a little bit, and riding in the front, um, you get kind of thrown out, uh, like when you go up one of the hills, you get thrown pretty good, and that was, that was quite a surprise. But uh, Blazing Fury also tends to have one of the shorter lines in the park, and it's just for me, it's a ride absolutely not to miss. Uh, Silver Dollar City, their sister park over in Branson, has uh, announced that their version called Fire in the Hole is closing permanently this year. Hopefully Dollywood's Blazing Fury has a bunch more years left in it. The small orange roller coaster here is Whistle Punk Chaser, which is the park's kids coaster. Yeah, the, the, the whistles are a nice coach. Going down the big trough there, that is Daredevil Falls, Dollywood's log plume ride. I love the splash. Oh, that, uh, that almost got me. That almost got me. <laughs> a very pretty log ride built into the natural mountain here I at Dollywood. I don't think I've ever done this before. Really? And uh, I really enjoyed it. A lot of good theming elements. It's small and little, but it looks yes. really pretty. And uh, pretty good capacity on this. It's not the easiest one to find. It's located kind of across from where the Eagles are in Craftsman Valley. But yeah, I would recommend this one. Also, you don't get very wet. Um, you kind of get like a little sprit, so that's kind of the acceptable level of wetness for me on a water ride. No wet shoes. No wet shoes. I think for the best view of Dollywood, you should ride the drop line, drop tower. It does, as you're going up, it does spin you all the way around, so you get to see an entire view of the park and the, uh, the surrounding Smoky Mountains, and then the big terrifying drop. Uh, also, drop line doesn't get that long of a line, so if you're at the park on a busy day, one I would definitely recommend. We're currently at one of Dollywood's most classic attractions, and that is the Dollywood Express. Their big old train ride goes all around the park. Now, the train, a couple things about it. It only runs about once every 45 minutes or so, and there's only one stop, so it's not like, you know, the Walt Disney World Railroad, where run, like a train leaves and two minutes later, a new train comes back. I definitely recommend downloading the app. As a Dollywood app, it will tell you exactly when the train is going to leave. But uh, the train's a very popular ride, so I would get there around at least 15 to 20 minutes early. And one big word of advice, I would sit as far back on the train as possible because a whole bunch of soot comes out of it and it could ruin your clothes. Uh, Molly had a jacket, jacket ruined one year when we came yeah. here. So uh, be careful what kind of clothes you're wearing. If you're wearing something fancy, just skip the train. Or if you do want to ride the train, try to go as far back as you can. This big old swing ride is the Barnstormer. I like these type of rides quite a bit. It's kind of in a weird spot in the park. Um, a little bit up a hill in the Craftsman's Valley area. So with it being in that weird spot, it tends to not get super long lines. But it is very, very fun. And one thing I like that Dollywood does, by a lot of their like height limit rides, they'll have like a kid's playground. So a parent could go play on the playground with one of the kids while other people in that same group would go on the rides. I quite like the little antique autos they have here at Dollywood. The cars are very, very snazzy. Yeah. All different little hot rod kind Doesn't of thing. Can they play music too? I might. I think it does in some sections. 
One ride I've personally never been on at Dollywood is this one here, the Smoky Mountain River Rampage. The park's whitewater rapid style ride. And I just don't enjoy the, the soaking river rides. And I believe this one does get you pretty wet. I've seen some people walking around. Rather soaked. Um, this ride also gets, if you're here on a hot day, uh, some of the longest lines in the park, like right now, I'm filming at 2.45 in the afternoon, a pretty busy day at Dollywood. And this ride has the longest line in the entire park at 80 minutes long. Right by Mystery Mine and drop on, you'll get Lumberjack Lifts, which is this kid-friendly ride where you kind of pull yourself up, and then when you let go, you gently drop down. It's actually a little bit of a workout, but it's a pretty neat attraction for kids. Not only home to the Dragonflyer and Big Bear Mountain roller coasters, Wildwood Grove also has a lot of rides for the whole family and the little ones. And a lot of cute rides. Like, look at this over here. A gentle acorn themed attraction. It is cute. That, that's just adorable. You also probably get some pretty cool views of some of the roller coasters on top. The Giant Tree Swing is another classic amusement park staple, the swinging ship. It looks like it's got like a salamander on the outside of it. Spinning around here is the Mad Mockingbird, which is the park's flying scooter ride. Nice breeze. Yes. Now I think one of the smartest things they did with Wildwood Grove is this building here, the Hidden Hollow. And inside this building is a giant playground that is air conditioned, and you got the stuff for the kids to hang out in over here, and the parents could sit on couches in the air conditioning. It's so nice. This is very smart. Molly, on your adorable ride listing, how, how does this one rank up there? This one's pretty adorable. It's up there. If the line for Big Bear Mountain is just too long and you want to get your bear fixed, well, here's the much more adorable Black Bear Trail. <laughs> Also, Big Bear Mountain has been breaking a lot today. Yes. But not Big Bear Trail. It's riding and riding oh so adorably. <laughs> Look at the little bear. It's so cute. If you're visiting Dollywood during a time of year when they're doing the fireworks and drone show, this is kind of the area you would want to stand. This would be the best view in the park. You kind of have the tree and then the drones and stuff go in the sky above there with the patterns facing towards you. Dollywood's a park that is known for its food selection. And something Molly and I, we've never done, is eat at one of the full service waiter restaurants. And we're gonna do that for the first time today here at Granny Ogle's Ham and Beans. We have sat down at our table, which is great for people watching. Also, we'll be able to hear the show as that starts in a little bit. Let's take a quick look at the menu here for Granny Ogle's Ham and Beans. A couple different starters. Mentor cheese and pork rinds. Sandwiches and salads. And the pricing on the full service menu here is not really any different than any of the quick service restaurants. The food has arrived. We got the pork rinds with the pimento cheese dip. Molly got the chicken pot pie. Mine smells really good. I got the pit ham dinner. And we made it to the grist mill. Now the grist mill, I wish this was smell vision for you guys because this is where Dollywood sells the world's famous cinnamon bread treat. You're only gonna get one food while at Dollywood? Well, it should probably be the cinnamon bread. Inside the grist mill. Oh, look at all the cinnamon bread. In the process of the deliciousness happening over here. Oh, man. So wonderful. And here's the cinnamon bread. It is a very large snack, um, so it could definitely feed more than one person. It is served very warm. You get your choice of apple butter or frosting. I definitely recommend going frosting. I'm very excited for this. Located right in the front of Dollywood, you've got a couple of good things. You've got the candy kitchen with some wonderful things in there like chocolate dipped cheesecake. There is also an ice cream parlor. And then my personal favorite is the bakery. Now, if the grist mill has a long line for cinnamon bread, I believe they do also sell it at this bakery. And the bakery is also where you can get the giant, giant Dollywood apple pie. In the front right corner of Dollywood, you'll find County Fair, which is probably my least favorite section of Dollywood. 
a lot of, it kind of feels like a, a carnival, a lot of kind of spinning rides. But while it's my least favorite area of Dollywood, if you got kids that like, you know, simple rides, this might be their favorite area. So let's go take a look. Shooting Star is a family-friendly drop tower. I like the guy in the middle. He is not taking off his cowboy hat. Will it stay on? Will it stay on? Yes, it will, because the ride's pretty gentle. <laughs> a very classic Scrambler-style attraction. Molly, these are not your favorite, right? They are not. My favorite ride in County Fair is this one here, the Sky Rider. You do have a little joystick that sort of can take you in and out just a little bit, but nice breeze and a cool view. Demolition Derby is the bumper car, and I love the little car design. Those are snazzy. In the farthest corner of County Fair, you do get some rides for the little, little ones. And this is something Dollywood doesn't really have a lot of, but these are just adorable. There's little ducks, little bees, and Molly, are these your favorite? These are my favorite pigs. The little pigs. With the scarecrow in the middle. The park swing ride is the waltzing swinger. I find it interesting is there's not like a, an American theme on it. It's a lot of like international boats. Uh, it definitely looks like one of the gentler swing rides you'll find. Pretty tame. The most thrilling ride in County Fair is the Dizzy Disc. I think these are pretty fun. They are fun. They got weird seats. If you've never been on them, the seats are weird. Like the restraint kind of comes from behind you. Another amusement park staple here, the Lemon Twist. Pretty traditional teacup style ride. I really like the name of the ride. Yeah. And uh, not one I would want to ride, but like, Molly, we're going to Disneyland with your family and your nieces are six years old. They are most excited to ride the teacups out of anything. Yep, everything. Teacups multiple times. And one final staple, the Dumbo style spinning elephants ride. Dollywood's carousel is located right by the train. It's mostly horses, but there are some other animals. You see a chicken, a dragon, a deer, mm -hmm. a pig, a zebra, a rabbit. Okay. County Fair is home to a bunch of Midway style carnival games. Good prizes with the, you know, Nintendo. And yeah, these are, these are pretty solid. Oh, where are you? Right now we're currently in Crapson's Valley here at Dollywood. And this is an area which really doesn't have too many rides. And it's very interesting. There's all sorts of artisans doing their crafts here. Lots of shops as well. This next segment of the video, we're gonna show you off some of the fun here in Crapson's Valley. Let's head on into the blacksmith shop. Here you can see the blacksmith shop, complete with the old timey anvils. And you're gonna see some regular guests in there. That's because you can do a couple different experiences here in Craftsman Valley. So here at the blacksmith shop, you can go in the shop and make your own knife. And I mean, that's a pretty cool experience for only 30 bucks. Here's some of the various books and things you can buy that was made right here at Dollywood. As well as like some fireplace sets. There is a church here in the Craftsman Valley area, uh, which actually does on Sundays like actual mass. Most of the time it's used kind of as a stage for performances. In Craftsman Valley you will find Eagle Mountain, which is a massive, massive enclosure filled with non-releasable American bald eagles. They tend to hang out way up towards the top of their enclosures. They're very loud today. They are very loud. That's not only an animal when you go like zoos and stuff, they, it, it feels sound. very loud. Yeah. In Crescent Valley, there is a bird show. Interesting, this one was not listed on the app for showtime. If you didn't get the chance to see the Wings of America show, you could come over here. I definitely try to do it earlier in the day because these birds do kind of get some privacy, but you could see them just hanging out. 
in Craftsman Valley, there is a theme park staple where you can do some gem mining or uh, pick a pearl. If you need a new cowboy hat or a leather belt, they've got you covered. And one section of it does have an area where they are doing the leather work and, and making the stuff. One of my favorite stops in Craftsman Valley is the glass blowing booth. There's also, no surprise, a gift shop where you can buy all sorts of blown glass things. Now, if you're coming to Dollywood and you're a big fan of Dolly Parton herself, they do have a cabin that is a recreation of Dolly's childhood home. See the house in here and the, uh, the very humble beginnings from which she came. In Craftsman's Valley, there's an old-timey schoolhouse Another pretty section of Dollywood with the waterfall. Molly, if we didn't eat at that wonderful ham and beans restaurant, I think we would have had to go on for the Big Bear Feast, named after the new roller coaster. Sliced beef, pulled pork, barbecue sauce, white cheddar, and Sidewinder fries. Currently in the candle shop at Craftsman's Valley. You can see the candle making process over here. Some really fun, nice. yeah, little mice. And there's also an interactive element where you can dip your own candles and uh, pick what kind of color candle you want. Uh, pretty inexpensive too, seven dollars. That's not bad at all. One thing that's a bit of a bummer to me is they used to have a, uh, a really cool wood carving shop here in Craftsman's Valley, but I guess they don't do that anymore. Uh, there is a Christmas store, and I do like me some Christmas. We get some Dollywood specific Christmas ornaments. I really like this. You could get the, uh, the Dollywood steam train. There is a booth where you can get some pork grinds cooked up fresh. In this next section, we're going to talk about some of the shows here at Dollywood. And I think the most classic show at Dollywood is here in the Pines Theater in the 50s area of the park. And that is a Dreamland Drive In. It's a really good show. Really, really good show. Uh, if you're here on a busy day, you might want to get there a little bit early. I know the day we're visiting Dollywood, there's only two show times of it, and it's a long show too. It'll run about 55 minutes, but it is wonderful. Top-notch theme park show. In the Heart Song Theater, located right by the carousel, this shows a 20-minute movie about the Smoky Mountains, about once an hour. There are a lot of sections of Dollywood. They're just very pleasant. Really pretty. Dollywood does have a bunch of these fuel rod portable charger uh, stations all around the park. You buy one once, and then whenever you want to swap it out for a fresh one, which is going to be fully charged, you just put it back in the, the thing. Uh, it's obviously not only a Dollywood thing, they have these at the Disney parks as well. You head onto this bridge here by this lake in the front of the park. You can see some of the big fish that live here at Dollywood. In the creek over by Lightning Rod, there's this cool turtle hanging out. Look at this guy. Cool fish, too. If you've been to Dollywood in the past, this building used to be the Chasing Rainbows Museum, a museum all about Dolly Parton. Well, that has been shut down, which is weird because I thought it was a really high quality museum. It was. Opening up at the park next year is going to be the Dolly Parton Experience, which I believe is going to have some really cool like projection mapping effects. Also over in this corner of the park, you could tour Dolly's tour bus. There's the Dream Song Theater with the harmonies of the Heart Show. And one of the most uh, unique gift shops you'll find at any theme park, and that is you can buy clothes that Dolly Parton would wear. Very, very unique. Right here we have my favorite fountain in all of Dollywood. 
I don't know what's going on with this bucket, why it's spouting water from multiple spots, but I love it. It's unique. Right next to the barn stormer, this is where Dollywood used to have the mountain slide winder ride. It did close down a couple of years ago, and I really feel like this area of the park is where Dollywood could put their next big roller coaster. Yeah. Which makes me want to ask you guys, what do you want to see as the next big Dollywood roller coaster? I think there's a couple things that would work really, really well. I think you could build a, uh, a mock extreme spinner like Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. I think you could build something like Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure or a big old hyper coaster through the mountains. One thing Dollywood does very well is special events. Right now we're visiting in the springtime, which means it's the Flower and Food Festival. Uh, during the summer, they do the Great American Summer Festival and they have a drone and fireworks finale. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the fall, they do a harvest festival with all sorts of really cool pumpkins. And then I think my favorite time of year to come to Dollywood is Christmas time. We came for Christmas last year. It was wonderful. Lots of lights, lots of wonderful shows. But it also makes Dollywood an interesting place to come back at different times of year and go to different events. Mm -hmm. Like uh, coming during the Flower and Food Festival and seeing all these topiaries, it's pretty neat. In this next segment, you're going to show off some of the merchandise available for all the roller coasters at Dollywood. Starting here in the Wild Eagle gift shop. Lots of t-shirts for Wild Eagle. And you can even buy your own Dollywood fanny pack. It's a line of merchandise for uh, I'm not chicken, I'm an eagle with a wild eagle. And some interesting glassware. Uh, if you wanted to buy a rubber chicken to say, throw in a wrestling ring after Cody Rhodes loses the main event of WrestleMania, <laughs> you could buy it in this gift shop. Lightning Rod does have its fair share of shirts. If you're a fan of the Coaster Dynamics line of merchandise, which are little kind of uh, replicas of coaster layouts or coaster trains, they do have quite a few here at Dollywood. Uh, there's a really, really soft Dollywood plushy ducks. They're so cute. There's also a lightning rod shirt, just kind of with the logo on it. That kind of more simple t-shirt is uh, the one I'm more likely to buy. And then they've also got hoodies. Right. It's nice that the gift shops do sell anything you might need in a theme park. Lens solution, headache medicine, sunblock, and for you stinky people, men's and women's deodorant. Not too many t-shirts for Mystery Mind. I like that this one has the vulture guy on it. Of course they would have to have lots of merchandise for the Big Bear Mountain, which is the new roller coaster. I imagine with this aesthetic, a very camping style, woodsy aesthetic, this stuff would probably sell very, very well here at Dollywood. This might be the coolest piece of Big Bear Mountain merchandise. There's 316 knockoff Lego bricks to build the ride car. That's awesome. They've got shirts for the various uh, mascots of Wildwood Grove. Benjamin. And even more Big Bear Mountain stuff. This one, that, that's a winner of a shirt right there. <laughs> you get a tin of milk chocolate sea salt, Big Bear Mountain Caramels. Or candy bars. Yeah. Or, that makes a lot of sense, the Big Bear Mountain Gummy Bears. You know, if this was at Walt Disney World, they'd probably sell 8 million of these. Oh, yes, definitely. I also like uh, this mug, like the flower pot. Oh, look at that. I love that they have a line of t-shirts for the famous cinnamon bread. Really nice Dollywood jackets for $40. I really like this. They've got a line of merchandise named Doggy Pardon for your dog. And look at this one. Your dog gets a little guitar. And there we go, that'll do it for Dollywood. And I hope you saw in this video, I really do enjoy this park. I think it's a fantastic theme park and just a wonderful collection of rides and roller coasters, shows, great food, a fun environment. I love the Craftsman's Valley area. Now, with that does come quite the price tag. Dollywood, once you get outside of the Disney's and Universal's, is one of the most expensive theme parks in the country. It costs $89 to get into and then $25 to park your car. So it is a wonderful place, but it is indeed a pricey place as well. One that I think is worth it, but maybe not doing on every single trip you come up here, as that price tag does add up. Now, if you got any questions about Dollywood, let me know in the comments section below. And thank you very much for watching this video.